Last week, we saw some new advances in the field of science and technology around the world. Let us discuss some of the significant updates one by one. On its next mission, set to lift off on 15 November, Rocket Lab will attempt to retrieve the first stage of its Electron Small Satellite Booster, after parachuting down into the Pacific Ocean. After helping to launch 30 small satellites on a mission, the first stage will return to Earth for a soft parachute-assisted ocean splash. Rocket Lab personnel will then fish the booster out of the Pacific Ocean and take it to shore for a detailed inspection. The effort to recover the first stage of the Electron rocket brings the Rocket Lab closer to capturing falling boosters in mid-air with a helicopter and then reusing the hardware. Once the rocket is brought back into the factory, the engineers pull it all apart and dig into how well each of the components in the sub-assemblies has performed. Reusability could lower costs significantly for Rocket Lab and its customers, but the company is pursuing reuse primarily to increase its rocket production rate and potential launch frequency. But Rocket Lab is not yet ready to try the chopper snag. The company wants to gather more data about the re-entry environment and the condition an electron booster is in after experiencing it. Besides, Rocket Lab wants to make sure it knows how to pass evade a falling first stage before getting a helicopter and a pilot anywhere close to it. So we're likely to see a few more guided splashdown before a helicopter gets involved. The mission will deploy 30 satellites into unique orbits. The satellites will enable internet from space, test new methods of deorbiting space debris, and enable research into predicting earthquakes. The launch will also feature a 3D printed mass simulator. SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 rocket on Thursday with the U.S. Space Force's third-generation GPS satellite. Two minutes into the flight, the rocket's nine Merlin engines shut down and the first stage got separated. Seven minutes later, the rocket's first stage touched down on the deck of SpaceX's drone ship. Falcon 9, on a course I still love you. In the meanwhile, the single Merlin engine on the upper stage pushed the GPS satellite into orbit. The second stage of the Falcon 9 ignited two times to maneuver the satellite into a transfer orbit at altitudes between about 400 kilometers and 20,200 kilometers, with an inclination of 55 degrees to the equator. The satellite got deployed nearly 90 minutes after liftoff, wrapping up SpaceX's 20th successful mission of the year. The deployment of the GPS-3 satellite as it's drifting away from Falcon 9. NASA contacts the Voyager 2 spacecraft with an upgraded Deep Space Network dish, located in Canberra, Australia. On October 29, mission operators sent a series of commands to NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft for the first time since mid-March. The spacecraft has been flying solo, while the 70-meter-wide radio antenna used to talk to it has been offline for repairs and upgrades. Voyager 2 returned a signal confirming it had received the call and executed the commands without issue. The call to Voyager 2 was a test of new hardware recently installed on Deep Space Station 43 the only dish in the world that can send commands to Voyager 2. Since the dish went offline, mission operators have been able to receive health updates and science data from Voyager 2. But they haven't been able to send commands to the probe, which has traveled billions of miles from Earth since its 1977 launch. Among the upgrades are two new radio transmitters. One of them, which is used to talk with Voyager 2, hasn't been replaced in over 47 years. Engineers have also upgraded heating and cooling equipment, power supply equipment, and other electronics needed to run the new transmitters. The successful call to Voyager 2 is just one indication that the dish will be back online in February 2021. NASA releases an incredible video of OSIRIS-REx tagging asteroid. Captured on October 20th during the OSIRIS-REx mission sample collection event, this series of images shows the navigation camera's field of view as the NASA spacecraft approaches, touches, and moves away from asteroid Bennu's surface. The sampling event brought the spacecraft down to sample site Nightingale, and the team on Earth received confirmation of successful touchdown. Preliminary data show the sampling head touched Bennu's surface for approximately six seconds, 
after which the spacecraft performed a back-away burn. These images were captured over an approximate three-hour period. The imaging sequence begins approximately one hour after the orbit departure maneuver and ends about two minutes after the back-away burn. The sequence was created using 189 images taken by the spacecraft SAMCAM imager. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, planned to succeed the Hubble Space Telescope, will be launched in a year. The launch date for the telescope is currently set for October 31, 2021, and scientists worldwide are greatly anticipating the launch. The James Webb Space Telescope is said to be 100 times more powerful than the Hubble. James Webb will be launched atop an Ariane 5 rocket. While the James Webb Space Telescope is a huge machine, it folds origami-like to fit into the spacecraft and deploy once in orbit. The telescope is incredibly expensive at $8.8 .8 billion and is a successor to the Hubble in many ways. The telescope's incredible power will operate on a 10-year primary mission to study the solar system, snap photos of exoplanets, reveal the first galaxies never seen by humanity, and explore the mysteries of the universe's origins. After launch, the telescope will travel about 1 million miles until it arrives at the second Lagrange point known as L2. In that orbit, Webb will stay in line with the Earth as it moves around the Sun. Hubble orbits the Earth and is only able to observe when it's on the night side of the planet. On the other hand, Webb will be continuously shielded from the Sun and can operate continually. L2 also provides a direct line of sight to the Earth, allowing NASA to send instructions at all times. NASA is currently working on their very first all-electric plane. The aircraft, known as the X-57 Maxwell, recently underwent wind tunnel testing at the Langley Research Center. The test took place in the low-speed aeroacoustic wind tunnel to gather operational and performance data for flight conditions. The tests used a pair of full-scale propeller assemblies, provided by Empirical Systems Aerospace California. The finished aircraft will feature 12 electronic high-lift motors and propellers. The propellers and electric motors are positioned along the leading edge of the wing of the aircraft. The motors and propellers will be utilized first during takeoff, providing lift augmentation to the aircraft at low speeds. Once the X-57 is in cruise mode, the motors will deactivate and the propeller blades fold inward to eliminate additional drag. A pair of larger electric cruise motors remain active on the wingtips. As the aircraft comes in for a landing, the smaller high lift motors will reactivate by unfolding their blades to create the appropriate lift for landing at approach speed. The project's design driver is currently a goal of a 500% increase in high-speed cruise efficiency, zero in-flight carbon emissions, and flight that is quieter for those on the ground. NASA conducted the wind tunnel tests over two weeks, exposing the hardware to wind speeds from zero to over 90 knots. During testing, the propeller operated for 14 hours. It's unclear when the first flight of the aircraft might happen. Virgin Galactic is planning to launch its Spaceship 2 vehicle on its third piloted test flight to suborbital space between November 19th and 23rd. Spaceship 2 is a six-passenger, two-pilot vehicle designed to take people and payloads on brief trips to suborbital space. Spaceship 2 lifts off from a runway under the wings of a big airplane called White Knight 2. At an altitude of about 15,000 meters, Spaceship 2 drops free and powers itself to suborbital space. Passengers aboard the spacecraft will get to experience a few minutes of weightlessness and see the curvature of Earth against the blackness of space before they come down to Earth for a runway landing. The upcoming flight will also carry some revenue-generating payloads via NASA's Flight Opportunities Program. The planned mission will mark the vehicle's first trip to space since February 2019. After nearly a year of silence, the Indian Space and Research Organization ISRO, is back in action with the successful liftoff of their polar satellite launch vehicle, PSLVC-49. The rocket, in its 51st flight, carried an all-weather Earth imaging satellite and nine foreign satellites. The primary payload is an Earth observation satellite intended for agriculture, forestry, and disaster management support. The rocket lifted off from Sathish Dawin Space Center Saturday afternoon. More than 15 minutes after liftoff, the launch vehicle successfully injected its primary payload into a low-Earth orbit, followed by nine customer satellites.